without my campaign's awareness, uh, made a statement that he was troubled with what he was hearing at some of uh, the rallies that your running mate uh, was uh, holding, in which the, all the public reports indicated were shouting, when my name came up, things like terrorist, and kill him. And that your running mate didn't mention, didn't stop, didn't say, hold on a second, that's kind of out of line. And I think uh, Congressman Lewis's point was that uh, we have to be careful about how we deal with our supporters. Now, <laughs> You've got to read what he said. You've got to read what he said. Let me, let me complete uh, uh, my response. Um, I do think that he inappropriately drew a comparison uh, between what was happening there and what had happened during the Civil Rights Movement. And we immediately put out a statement saying that we don't think that comparison is appropriate. And, in fact, afterwards, Congressman Lewis put out a similar statement saying that he had probably gone over the line. The important point here is, though, the American people have become so cynical about our politics because all they see is a tit for tat and back and forth. And what they want is the ability to just focus on some really big challenges that we face right now. And that's what I have been trying to focus on this entire campaign. I we can have that. serious differences about our health care policy, for example, John, because yeah. we do have a difference on health care policy. We do, and I hope we talk about it. Talking about it this evening. All right. uh, sure. But when people suggest that I pal around with terrorists, then we're not talking about well, issues. What well, we're talking well, about... Let, does he let, me just say, I would, I would, let, let me just say categorically, I'm proud of the people that come to our rallies. Whenever you get a large rally of 10, 15, 20,000 people, you're going to have some fringe peoples. You know, you know that. And, and, I've, and I, we've always said that that's not appropriate. But to somehow say that that group of young women who said military wives from McCain are somehow saying anything derogatory about you but or anything. And those veterans that wear those hats that say World War II, Vietnam, Korea, Iraq, that I'm not going to stand for people saying that the people come that come to my rallies are anything but the most dedicated, patriotic men and women that, that are in this nation and, the, and they're great citizens. And I'm not going to stand for somebody saying that because someone yelled something at a rally. There's a lot of things that have been yelled at your rally, Senator Obama, that I'm not happy about either. In fact, some t-shirts that are very John, uh, I, I unacceptable. So the point is, the point is that I have repudiated every time someone's been out of line, whether they've been part of my campaign or not. And I will continue to do that. But the, but the fact is that uh, we need to absolutely not stand for the kind of things that have been going on. I haven't. Well, uh, look, Bob, as I yeah, said... I mean, do you uh, take issue with that? You know, he, he, here's what I would say. Um, I mean, we can have a debate back and forth about... Uh, the merits of each other's campaigns, I suspect we won't agree here tonight. Uh, uh, what I think is most important uh, is that we recognize that to solve the key problems that we're facing, if we're going to solve two wars, the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression, if, we can, uh, if we're going to focus on lifting wages that have declined over the last eight years and create jobs here in America, then Democrats, Independents, and Republicans, we're going to have to be able to work together. And what is important is making sure that we disagree without being disagreeable. And it means that we can have tough, vigorous debates around issues. What we can't do, I think, is try to characterize each other as bad people. Uh, and that well, has been a culture in Washington but that's been taking place for too long. And I think, well, Bob, Donna, I you think... You asked me a direct question, question. about... Oh, yeah, yeah, real answer. quick. Uh, Mr. Harris, I don't care about an old washed-up terrorist. But as Senator Clinton said in her debates with you, we need to know the full extent of that relationship. We need to know the full extent of Senator Obama's relationship with Acorn, who is now on the verge of maybe perpetrating one of the greatest frauds in voter history in this country, maybe destroying the fabric of democracy. Same front outfit organization that your campaign gave $832,000 for, for, quote, lighting and, and site selection. So, 
All of these things need to be examined, right. of course. I'm going to Bob, let I you think, respond I think it's and we'll be, extend this. It, it, just it's, it's, it's going to be important to just, I'll respond to these two particular yes. allegations that Senator McCain's made and that have gotten a lot of attention. In fact, uh, Mr. Ayers uh, has become the centerpiece of Senator McCain's campaign over the last two or three weeks. Uh, this has been their primary focus. So let's get the record straight. Uh, Bill Ayers is a professor of education uh, in Chicago. Forty years ago, when I was eight years old, he engaged in despicable acts with a radical domestic group. Uh, I have roundly condemned those acts. Ten years ago, uh, he served and I served on a school reform board that was funded by one of Ronald Reagan's former ambassadors and close friends. Mr. Annenberg. Uh, other members on that board were the presidents of the University of Illinois, uh, the president of Northwestern University, who happens to be a Republican, the president of the Chicago Tribune, a Republican-leaning newspaper. Uh, Mr. Ayers is not involved in my campaign. He uh, has never been involved in this campaign, and he will not advise me in the White House. So that's Mr. Ayers. Now, with respect to ACORN, uh, ACORN is a community organization. Apparently what they've done is they were paying people to go out and register folks. And uh, uh, apparently some of the people who were out there didn't really register people. They just filled out a bunch of names. Had nothing to do with us. We were not involved. The only involvement I've had with ACORN was I represented them alongside the U.S. Justice Department in making Illinois implement a motor voter law that helped people get registered at DMVs. Now, the reason I think that it's important to just get these facts out is because uh, the allegation that Senator McCain's continually made is that somehow my associations are troubling. Let me tell you who I associate with. On economic policy, I associate with Warren Buffett and former Fed Chairman uh, Paul Volcker. If I'm interested in figuring out my foreign policy, I associate myself with my running mate Joe Biden or with Dick Luger, the Republican ranking member on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, or General Jim Jones, the former Supreme Allied Commander of NATO. Those are the people, Democrats and Republicans, who have shaped my ideas and who will be surrounding me in the White House. And I think the fact that this has become such an important part of your campaign, Senator McCain, says more about your campaign than it says about me. Well, again, while you were on the board of the Woods Foundation, you and Mr. Ayers together, you sent $230,000 to ACORN. So, uh, and you launched your political campaign in Mr. Ayers' living room. That's absolutely not and, true. At, and the facts are facts and records are and records. That's not the and fact. it's not the fact, it's not the fact that Senator Obama choose to associate with a guy who in 2001 said that he wished he'd bomb more and he had a long association with him. It's the fact that all, the fa all of the uh, details need to be known about Senator Obama's relationship with them and with ACORN, and the American people will make a judgment. And my campaign is about getting this economy back on track, <laughs> about creating jobs, about a brighter future for America. And that's what my campaign is about. And I'm not going to raise taxes the way Senator Obama right. wants to raise taxes in a tough economy. And that's really what this, this campaign is right. going to be about. All right. Let's go to the next topic. And you, we may want to get back into some of this during this next discussion. I want to ask both of you about the people that you're going to bring into the government. And our best insight yet is who you picked as your running mates. So I'll begin by asking mm -hmm. both of you this question. And I'll ask you to answer first, Senator Obama. Why would the country be better off if your running mate became president rather than his running mate? Well, uh, Joe Biden, I think, is one of the finest public servants uh, that has served in this country. Uh, it's not just that he has some of the best foreign policy credentials of, of anybody. Uh, and Democrats and Republicans alike, I think, acknowledge uh, his expertise there. Uh, but it's also that uh, his entire life, he has never forgotten where he came from. Coming from Scranton, fighting on behalf of working families, uh, remembering what it's like to see his father lose his job and, and go through a downward spiral economically. And as a consequence, uh, his consistent pattern throughout his career is to fight for the little guy. 
Uh, that's what he's done when it comes to economic policies that will help working families get a leg up. That's what he's done when it comes to, for example, passing the uh, land.